So um, let's start. Okay, our next section uh, speakers signal me that uh, they are ready. So um, for the next section, I would like to invite Dr. Sisquile and Ms. Karen. Uh, both of them are two of the key important um, team member from MTT program. As uh, MTT um, Jesse advisors, uh, I would like to invite Karen and uh, C to um, facilitate our next section, would, uh, which name is what is an inclusive MTT alliance could look like. Uh, C and Karen, the floor is yours. Can we have uh, one round of applause for our speakers? Thanks, Nian. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our session. Nan said we are going to speak, so I'm not so sure if you'll clap at the end of this session because we are not speaking, but we are going to get you to partner with us in an activity as we discuss um, what an, inclusion, an inclusive MTT alliance would look like. The aim of this session is for us to reflect, imagine, think about what are our aspirations, what would we like to see, and this connects to some of the sessions that we had earlier. If I can draw from Tianis's presentation, 95% of the institutions that have signed up for the Alliance said yes, they are already engaged in doing Jetsi in their work, so that is one. And also to draw from the previous panel session, I think Ridi highlighted some of the gaps that they were able to pick from um, the synthesis that they did from Summonet for All. So all that we are bringing it together. And so on that note, I will ask us all to please stand up. Everyone, please stand up. And just to check that Boripat is helping me with the time. Yes, thank you very much. And if you feel like you didn't do so well with counting your steps so far today, this is a good opportunity. We're going to make up for what we have lost or have not achieved so far. So if you're missing 100 steps, this is an opportunity at the end of these 35 minutes we would have clocked 100 steps, right? So, um, Agus, can we have the next slide? And we can start walking around. Like me, I'm walking around. Let's walk around. Please leave your chair, please leave your table, and just walk around. Just walk around. Those who are not yet moving, I'm not going to say the next prompt. Please listen to the instructions. Please walk around. And stand in threes. Please stand in threes. Not twos, please stand in threes. And in your group, please discuss that question. And if we are going to achieve inclusion in MTT, it will take us to be good listeners. We need to listen. We have been talking about the diverse voices, so we need to listen. We start putting that into practice in this room. So from the people that you are with, please listen attentively. And they will also listen to you as we answer that first question, what do inclusion and equity mean at this critical stage in the Alliance? And why are they important? Why I'm saying listen attentively is because we'll then come back together and share what we have heard from other people. So we can start discussing and sharing. No answer is wrong. 
every answer is valuable. Anyone who doesn't have a group, please find people and you stand in threes. We have a bell. Two minutes left. I hope everyone has had a chance or is having a chance to talk. Okay, let's get back to counting our steps. Um, we can move away from the people that we've been talking to. Just walk around. Yes, let's walk around. Let's walk around. We've, we've had a heavy lunch. We've had a heavy tea. So let's walk around. Please move around. Just take a random walk. Just keep walking. I will tell you to stop. Keep walking. And please move away from the people that you are familiar with. Move away from the people that you've been talking to. I haven't told you to stop, so please keep walking. Yes, keep walking. And these are the practicalities of inclusion. Inclusion will mean that sometimes you step away from the people that you know, from the perspectives that you usually 
would be comfortable getting and looking for those people that you have never interacted with before and you get to listen to them. So keep walking. I haven't asked you to talk. Don't stand in threes because the next prompt is not to stand in threes. So don't look for two people. Please stand in fives. Fives, yes. Stand in fives. Stand in fives. <laughs> yes, it's part of inclusion. Five people. Yes, five people this time. Um, can we have the next question, please? Can we have question two? So we're not discussing that one. There's the next one. How can equity and inclusion be built in at this early stage? So we want to get things right and correct from the onset. How can we achieve this? You have five minutes for this as well. Two minutes, okay. So we have two minutes, not five. Please remember I said you have to listen as well. We have less than a minute, so I hope we're all getting a chance to talk. Time to walk again. Finished. No, 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 no. <laughs> we still have two more questions, right? Please wrap up now. And let's get back to walking again. And I'll tell you when to stop. Yes. Let's keep walking. Let's keep walking. Yes. Let's keep walking. Move away from the people that you've been talking to. 
find new people that you have not talked to. We want to be sure that we get to practice what we can do in the field. Let's keep moving. The groups are, are, are destroyed. Can I walk with you? <laughs> I want to destroy your group. Yes. Let's move. Let's walk. Um, okay. Stand in sevens this time. Sevens. Let's stand in sevens. Find six other people. Agus, can we have the next question? Let's stand in sevens. Okay, so there is our question three. Okay, so this question, I'm going to ask Karen to explain it a bit and then we can get discussing again. So, in the beginning of Chianis' presentation, we looked, at the, we looked at the objectives. You have overarching objectives for the Alliance. And underneath those objectives, you have a set of principles that you apply. We're talking about equity and inclusion as principles, but perhaps there are other principles that we'd also like to bring into the Alliance at this stage. Things that we feel are very important and we think will anchor our Alliance now as the very first Alliance meeting moving forward. So what are the core principles, equity and Alliance, uh, sorry, equity and inclusion? if you think those are core principles, but what else needs to be considered at this stage as we move forward in building this alliance? Any questions about that? Thanks, Karen. So let's discuss about the other core principles that we need to consider in the alliance moving forward. What else? You discuss in your group, yes, tell your group members. Okay, our time is up for this question. And now we move again. 
we we well, left the five years. Let's move again for the last dish time. For the last dish time. Then we'll get to the last time. Now we move for the last dish time. We are moving on to our final question. Um, Akus, can we please have the last question? Please let's move and make sure that you are not keeping the same group. Please talk to different people because if you keep talking to the same people, there is a day that this is what you are going to do with your research. I will tell you how many people now. <laughs> Just move, keep moving. Step out of your comfort zone. Be willing to listen to different perspectives. Leave, leave your office at national level and go to the community level. No, I didn't tell you to stand in groups. So please move. Yes, not yet, I will tell you. And for fellows, I'll encourage you not to keep talking to fellows. Please talk to other colleagues, other senior colleagues. They need to hear your voice. Yeah. Okay, let's stand in fives again. Yes. Five people, so find four other people. Find four other people. Okay, so let's discuss the next, the last question, which is what are our action steps? How do we ensure that we walk the talk? We have another two minutes for this and then our time will be up. Okay, now the last one. Remember last time I said it's lastish. The last one. The last one. Please move away from people. Find a spot alone. Please stand alone. Hello. Please stand alone. Please break your groups. No more groups. Stand alone. Yes. Please stand alone. Undisturbed. Uninterrupted. Please don't stand with anyone. Um. Yes. At the back. Please stand alone. Let's move away from the groups. No more talking. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Why I'm asking you to stand alone is because inclusion and equity, while we do it in the work that we do, at the end of the day, it's also a personal reflection. It's also a personal conviction. So in the conversations that we have had, I want you to stop and think from all that you have had, 
from all that you have said to others, what stood out for you? What's the one thing that you think, okay, we are talking about an inclusive alliance. What do I need to do as an individual? What does my institution need to do better? That's why you need to stand alone because some of these things, we don't want you to bring it to us. We want you to think about it and think where do we need to make the changes. And then you go and do those changes. So inclusion starts with I for a reason. It starts with you reflecting as a person. So that's why I'm asking you to stand alone and think about it. Think about your flagship study. Think about your rapid response grant. Think about the MTT program as a whole. Think about what have you had what do you need to change at a personal level? What do you need to change as an institution? What value do you bring, do you want to bring to the Alliance? Remember, it's at a starting stage. So one minute for these personal reflections. Just one minute. Um, Boripat, you'll help me with the time. Just one minute for this personal reflection moment. What are you taking away? What will you share with your colleagues? Whether it's your institutional policies that you're now thinking, okay, I've had people talking, maybe I need to change my institutional policy. So all that. So for personal reflections, Ideally, we should be dead silent. Okay, that wasn't a minute, but I think um, we have some reflections. So in the two minutes remaining, I just want to ask volunteers. Remember when we started, I said inclusion and equity also demand us to be good listeners, right? So um, I want, I know there's a volunteer somewhere this side. Yes. Please share your reflections. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk again and for the encouragement from my teams. So I, I think uh, what I learned so far from this is like uh, whenever we talk to each other, we always have the same um, ideas and prob uh, problems that we see in our, uh, in our country, especially in the Mekong regions. And uh, I think for me personally, I reflect a lot on this type of opportunity because when you talk about inclusion, when you talk about a woman in this type of policy dialogue, uh, we see less represent, uh, representative and especially in country like Cambodia where we just uh, like um, overcome from our challenge, from like uh, the the wall, we have Khmer Rouge and everything, and we have to start from zeros again. And the new generation, they are very young, and uh, it is really important to have some people. I mean, like some people like myself here, and when we come here and we see this type of opportunity, we understand our uh, values and also understand. Uh, what we can get from this and then we go back we can inspire people to say like we can do it We can dream big and we can join this type of uh, dialogue to learn more. Thank you Thank you very much. I think she has kick-started us on a very good note and it's encouraging to hear that at least one person will walk away from this session with something that they have learned that they are taking back home. I just want to ask anyone who has a principle that they had which stood out for them. 
anyone, if you did, haven't had an opportunity to speak, to share, um, volunteers are allowed. Okay. Dr. Singh? <laughs> Actually, uh, my dream is to mix uh, dots to be connected. That is my dream. So how can we better to connect the existing dot to be the better network? Connecting the dots and creating a better network, a better alliance. So we all have that responsibility here, right? Um, and when I'm walking, I'm not walking towards you, but if you want me to come to you with the mic, please feel free. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I just want to share this uh, reflection. What I love most about this exercise is that the one minute personal reflection. And I think it's very, a very powerful exercise. I've been doing a lot of self-reflection and like thinking. On, I think it's partly because I've been living away from home and alone. So can I have a show of hand who here is living alone by yourself with no pets? Uh, no roommates in another country that is not your home country. Yes, right? So how often do you find yourself thinking alone? <laughs> That's good. And do you usually come up with like freelance ideas or good ideas when you slow down and just think, right? Because I feel like in this modern life, we just have the constant stimulation to the brain, like either from social media or from all forms of entertainment from our phone on uh, YouTube, television, right? So I love that you include that one minute personal reflection there. I really appreciate it. I, I encourage you to do that, but maybe longer, five minutes, 10 minutes a day, but just stop stimulating your brain just try to slow down and really think. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other reflections? So thank you very much. So um, while I'm talking to my team, I can say in a team that we want to understand different perspectives from different countries, especially from uh, different backgrounds. But we want to, to include, not exclude from any activities. For example, we want to talk about, we want to move our alliance forward. So what kind of action, activity, activity we want to do is to start organizing, uh, preparing. For example, we want to develop a joint proposal. So the activity, we have to meet each other. We can set uh, every week or every month, we can meet to develop a joint proposal together with participants from different country and different relevant stakeholder to be involved. So the, activi the activity that we will do will get the impact to the next generations or the future sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nile, I think I saw your hand up. No, just uh, two things that came to mind during this is, first of all, um, do we all really understand what inclusion is? Um, because in some of the discussions, we're talking about inclusion being the constituents that we work with. Some people think, do we, do we actually include all our own staff in our own organization? Um, are we actually all coming at this from the same page? And I think there's differences, so this is something we need to, to try and think through. The second thing, as it was a good point, is languages. Um, are, we, are we communicating in all the languages or are we just doing it predominantly in English or maybe in Thai? But that is excluding a lot of people if we don't. So AI and technology can help us to get this information out to all communities. So just check. Thank you very much. Okay, see another hand. Um, Boripat, how are we doing on time for the session? Thank you very much. Uh, from, uh, from my observations, your exercise that not to only to come up with the really interesting the ideas and sharing the best practices among our colleagues here. But one thing I would like to say, 
if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go and really far, we should go together. That's what I can summarize for your exercise. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on that note, I just want to say thank you very much to all of you. As you noticed, walking around, talking to different people, it wasn't comfortable at first. It wasn't what we wanted to do at first, but we did do it eventually. That is what inclusion and equity is at times to some of us. It's a new topic, unfamiliar. As Niall said, we have different understandings and all that. But again, through this alliance, Hopefully, if one of the successes that we're going to achieve, it's going to be a common shared understanding of what inclusion and equity mean for the Mekong region. And it's going to be us coming together and having shared principles that will guide the alliance. Um, I think we already have some of the things. Um, we need to connect the dots and see what we can do. Hopefully, we will come back to this and realize that all our efforts were for a good cause. Thank you very much. And I pass on to Nyan. Please find your seat. You are now free to sit down. And like I promised, your 100 steps are done. Thank you very much, C, for a very inter interactive and active section. Um, I hope that you um, have the, had a very good experience. Of course, um, Jesse is one of the lifelong learning journey, and this is one of the moments that we had a chance to reflect at the organizational and individual how have we contributed to make um, more positive impact uh, in the world around us. And now we dive, uh, we dive deeping, uh, deeply into um, the alliance uh, issue, not issue, but more of an exploration of the future, the current and everything. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Andrew. Dr. Andrew, we hear you here with us to take the floor and walk us through MPT Alliance, our current and future. Thank you. Uh, thanks uh, very much, Liang, and uh, thanks very much for the opportunity to facilitate this session. Um, the session is not going to require you to do any steps at all, uh, but it will require you to, to really engage in a conversation about the future of your alliance uh, and your networks. So uh, I've got two helpers with me, but, uh, firstly, uh, Dr. Chinese, and secondly, uh, Burupat. And I think you, you know everyone on stage. And I'm going to ask Dr. Chinese to walk us through what is being planned at the moment uh, around a possible future of the alliance and the network. Dr. Chinese, um, you don't have to come and stand here. It might be even better to, to stand down there. Um, can we have those slides, uh, Agus? And it's been a long day, so there's only two slides. So uh, over to you, Chinese. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it has been a long day. And in fact, uh, I feel this the session is trying to really capture so much these expressions and also suggestion to the Alliance. And as you know, we would like to celebrate our success being together, uh, summoned now 19 years, almost 20 years, and the MTT uh, is coming to the second year, and as the program is ending uh, third year, so we have about a year left. 
but our passions and also like our energies really motivate us to think about the futures, you know. The program is a program. But as mentioned earlier, the network and the alliance would like to exist longer beyond the lifetime of the program. And that's why your inputs, your thought, your suggestions, so valuable. I really like to continue from Dr. Nimpasad mentioned earlier. If you want to go very quickly, you know, you just go alone. But if you want to go very far, you really should go together. And from the discussion today, I heard so much suggestion. And one of gentlemen, our dear colleague mentioned, when we develop joint program or joint proposal together, we have to really discuss on what are the activity in there. And what I'm proposing here, as you see the slides here, please don't be surprised. So we are talking about the future of the alliance, the future of the summit, future of the alliance. We would like to develop the joint proposal, you know, joint program in a way that carry the wish, carry the hope, and carry your expectations together with us here because this is a proposal from everyone here. So uh, currently, uh, we are uh, hopeful to submit the proposal, two proposals to two funders. And we try to really understand the wish uh, from everyone, not only from this room. We have been consulting with a partner. And I would like to highlight, I'm so much happy that solo discussion today is actually really reflecting what this program proposal will be able to offer. Like uh, we discussed about the challenge on climate uh, change, challenge in water resources, and challenge in addressing equality, equalities, people with disability. So we are putting two proposals to address these problems. Um, linking with how we can ensure climate resilience in the Mekong region that is both just and sustainable. So different program uh, donor and the kind of priority they have really fixed priority and very kind of uh, you know specific and we need to adapt our proposals in a way meet with their uh, consideration for uh, possible funding. But this is really the thing that we move along, yeah, you know. Um, and the second is we like to ensure that we improve the policy and practices. So as our expected outcome, it's not only the paper that we produce, not only kind of video or something, but we want to achieve to that level. That's why we're putting the proposal for four or five years uh, for consideration rather than just very short time. And what we like to highlight is we want to enhance, continue enhancing the capacities of alliance and network members. We want to strengthen the network and alliance themselves. And we want to really make sure that the knowledge generated uh, is really jointly generated. And we have opportunity and enough time to implement and to see how we can really change our practice in the way that is just and transformative. And that's why we propose the next, please. Next slide, please. So the next slide would show what type of grants we hope that the future program would cover and really give opportunity for all interested parties that would like to collaborate with us, be part of the future family, if they are not now within the family. So we keep the funding or uh, as a proposal here, uh, we're putting two proposals and these two proposals will cover the thing that we discussed here about impact, how we can learn from the past and do more. Like we heard about their uh, panel this afternoon, their past work, how they can past work be useful as a lesson as an experiment, as a possibility to scale up 
or demonstrations. So we put it here. The red one is a new type of grants that we are proposing in this new program in the proposal. So in the past, we have fellowship grants still remain here. Lovely less one grants we would like to keep to enable organization that maybe they work on small activity engage with some practical polu uh, policies and scoping studies and grant to understand what we actually already have. You know, the new one is to allow one is impact and the other is engagement. Engagement beyond individual project. The highest word that Agus put on the poll and everyone contributing in selection is collaboration, cross-project learning, field visit, expecting, exchanging expertise. This will cover under kind of engagement grants. The other grant is quite major and big. It's called joint study. It's not only learning. This joint study have the caliber that research community have to work with local community and also policy actor can be either the government or intergovernmental organizations. Recently, we were requested by Mekong River Commissions to help the Mekong River Commissions conduct joint community research. There's some concern that, you know, the trust between the intergovernmental organization and local community that they want to have their real research that reflecting the voice on ground and how we can make sure that this happen, how we can make sure that the methodology of research legalized, how we can make sure that this type of study result will fit into the policy planning, how we can make sure this we have equal level of being part of this joint study, not marginal group, you know, how we can ensure people could be part of this joint study together. We heard about MRC and Lan Chang Mekong Corporation Water Center do joint study, high level. It took them two, three years to draft the TOR, and it took them three years to agree on this or that. So what is our vision? Our hope is in the future, there will be some joint study that engage civil society, not only one organization, but as a team, as a network, engaging the local community-based organization to be part of this joint productions of knowledge and truly identify the solution that we feel is practical and also doable within the time frame. So these are part of the thing we're proposing in this proposal. And the left hand side is another proposal that we are submitting this same week is to make sure that we actually have trying to like think about engagement with the private sector. Dr. Singh asked several times, is there any example of that? There's so many people quiet, then we have to move on. That is a very clear gap in our alliance and network about private sector engagement, business engagement. So we like to give the seed, you know, seed innovation grant is the time where we will have the resources for us, the researchers, to talk, to work, to talk, explore the option with business, with the communities, come up with the idea. So 30,000 here, it just really give opportunity for you to engage, come up with a good idea for a major so-called innovation grants. This will be more implementation, pilot, demonstrations, scale up. So this is something we propose together in combination. If we have these two proposals put in and successful, we hope to have about 100 grants and supporting almost 500 grantees. So this is really big. Our family will be much bigger. But this is really our hope. And uh, I just want to say this is really the program that we propose to be the program for everyone. And if anyone have comment or suggestion, 
please feel free to do so now or later. We have only a few days left for proposal submission, but we will make sure that we try our best to accommodate that. And the second point is if any organization would like to support our submission and willing to put the letter of support to us, it will be very helpful. So we will put this and make sure that we got buy-in from many organizations. Um, we would like to hear from you and we hope this will po this program proposals will really, how to say, have you join our uh, journey together in coming for five years. So thank you very much. Maybe I stop here. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Dr. Chinese. And, and now I'm, I'm going to ask Burupat, and most of you know Burupat. He's uh, very active within the, uh, both Summonet and the Alliance. And, and to maybe ask Burupat, what are your personal thoughts about the Alliance, the network, and, and the future? Yes, thank you so much, Andrew and Dr. Shanis. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Baripat. For those of you who don't know me, I am a coordinator with the MTT program. And I've given the question a little bit of thought uh, in the past few hours. <laughs> so I, I want to also preface by saying that I'm not an expert in this field. I'm just a coordinator. So uh, some, of my, some of the things that I share may be a bit aspirational or it might be a bit naive. So please bear with me. But I think I try to group my thinking into four, four themes or four topics uh, in terms of a, the, the, develop, the development of a future regional alliance. And I think my talking points are mainly maybe as uh, recommendations or advice to the, what was shown on the right-hand side about from component one for the MTT Water and Climate Alliance in particular. Uh, and so my first point is about knowledge base. And what I mean is I really want to encourage the proposal, but also just everyone um, who are interested in this alliance to kind of embrace different types of knowledge. Uh, I think most of us are, are researchers, so we're quite familiar with science-based kind of knowledge, so through our research, rigorous research, etc. But I'd also really like to encourage uh, everyone to think about experience-based knowledge as well, uh, taking into account local knowledge and local practices. I think that Local communities uh, are not just beneficiaries, they can also be our teachers as well. My second point is on inclusion, and of course I'd like to see us, our alliance, engage different kinds of organizations, and I think we've already started to do that, and there are some active attempts to bring up different diverse members into the alliance. Uh, in particular, youth networks, I think, has been done quite well, and I'd really like to encourage uh, that moving forward. But on the opposite side of like, the age spectrum, I'd, al I'd also like to encourage us to think more, some more bit about networks, and I don't know how to phrase this, but people who are above the age of retirement as well. Not just the young, it's good that we're looking at the young people and the middle people, but don't forget the seniors as well, because they have a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of experiences, and they also engage, well, in my experience, for example, my grandparents, they usually engage in their local policy processes as well through their working in the communities. So let's not forget them. Uh, and of course, JETSI, very important. I think we have to engage as many uh, JETSI organizations in meaningful ways as possible. Uh, and in particular, I am quite uh, feel strongly that we have to engage more actively with organizations for people with dis disabilities. I think that these organizations and people with disabilities have for a long time, I don't want to say be ignored, but at least not being spotlighted or highlighted as much as they should be. And I think this is a really good opportunity for us to kind of bring that out a lot more. And I think uh, the MTT JETSI team currently is already have plans for that, but I'd like to encourage and kind of emphasize that we should do more for people with disabilities. Uh, and of course, I think that JETSI should be the core of the alliance, not just an add-on or an extra. Uh, I think that's really important. Well, my third point is related to policy engagement. I'd really like to encourage everyone and also our proposal to kind of move away from thinking of policy influence or policy impact as a linear process. Because most of the time when I hear people talk about policy impact or influence, it's always A to B to C. But I think that in the real world, it's a lot more complex than that. And so I really think that we need to think outside the box a little bit and be adaptive and, and, and reflect the reality a bit. I'd also like to say that we sh and this is maybe just like a 
side recommendation, but I think that we should not be afraid. I, I think that we, I think in over, overall, we've done a good job at um, engaging with bureaucrats and uh, d government departments, etc. But I think that we should not be afraid of engaging with politicians or elected officials because they too play an important part in the policy process in our countries. And I'm also, I also want to include activists in that group as well. My last point is on private sector engagement, which is quite a hot topic at the moment. Everyone is doing it. I, I think that's great, I think, but I, I, there is a caveat that I feel that we should not just be focusing on big businesses. I think that I, I would really like to encourage us to also consider smaller in entities, for example, social enterprises, but also pharma or community co cooperatives as well, because they have, they have quite a lot of information and, and we should not ignore them. And as kind of like final thoughts in developing this regional alliance, I think that discussing and planning is good, but we should not do too much of it and take too long for it, because otherwise it will not happen. I think, it's, I think we should not be afraid to launch it and put it into action. And don't be afraid to, to, to have some failures along the way, because we can learn from our mistakes. And we have to be, make sure that we are flexible and adaptive and I'm really excited about uh, this current uh, MTT Alliance and the new proposal that's being developed. I really encourage everyone uh, to sign up and be members of our, our family, as Dr. Shanice nicely puts it, and looking forward to having more conversations with all of you in the next few days on how we can better uh, enhance our regional alliance together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Burupa. Um I think, Niang, you, you indicated to me we've got another 10 minutes. Uh, uh, well, we'll make that 30 minutes then. Uh, uh, okay, so I'd like to open it up to the floor now. Uh, you've heard from Dr. Chinese and you've heard from Buripa. Now, it's your thoughts. I, I'd be grateful to get your feedback um, on what you think. S sorry, Andrew, because time limit, so I... No, <laughs> first, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Janet, for introducing the future of these uh, two programs, Sermonet and MTT. Yeah? I have uh, some uh, uh, questions and also suggestions. Uh, first point, I see that about funding. With the funding nowadays, with the value depression, and also the living standard increase in the Mekong country, the funding uh, Thirty thousand, fifty thousand dollar Australia dollar now becomes less than the value is less than ten years ago or twenty years ago. So we cannot do much work. So I propose that maybe we don't come with the number big, many number of small project, but we try to have a bigger amount of money, but less number of project. That may be less attractive to donor, but we have a better in plan, a better project. Because nowadays, with 30,000 or 50,000 Australia, we cannot do much work. And that causes difficulty to our partner to do the work in the country. The second point is about the policy in plan, the policy impact. We mentioned a lot. But the problem is that our case study on way look like uh, I say, ambitious to have an impact, big impact, and promise big impact. Because uh, our case study affair that at the end, the evaluation of a program will say that the case study is not success enough. But we have to make clear to the case study that we don't expect big impact. We just expect small impact and that influence for the evaluation at the end of the program. When the case study is finished, how we evaluate that. And we look on the policy impact of the program as a whole, rather than we try to say each case study should have a big impact on policy. Make clear that for case study to let pressure and let the promise of big impact of case study, and they will have a more successful for local people or local authority. And that one, besides of the policy, I see that the program have a big impact on the regional integration and bring partner in the Mekong country together. 
And we have to make clear that in the proposal to donor, rather than we just emphasize only policy and they don't see the, the big impact of the program. And that is a good outcome to justify the funding. We have to make clear that in the program. And the other, we have uh, the complexity in Vietnam on behalf of the Vietnamese partner, I would say that Recently, the government uh, have a decision 80 that on the foreign funding should go a complex process of the approval of six ministry, and that goes a long process, sometimes up to six months or a year to get approval, and that is why we have a complexity. So we, get, we propose that the secretary try to help to simplify the process of contract for the Vietnamese partner to solve this problem. <laughs> I said it's grand. And the last point, I say that GSC is a new for the Mekong country. So therefore, please have a more training and make clearer what the partner can do in the GSC. Because at the moment I see many reports and many case studies. Really, the GSC has not clear and what they can do in the GSC study. Mainly say that number of women involved in the survey, that is a GSC, but that is not correct. So thank you. Thank you, Juan, um, uh, for those valuable insights. Um, and and I, I'll just make a comment with Juan, and, and this is about the value. Maybe as the Mekong has emerged, most of the countries are now emerged from least developed countries. Maybe it's time to think about co-investments, where the countries themselves start to put funding up front or on the table. I'm going to hand it over to you, Burapat, the, the question about JETSI and, and your impression of JETSI in, in the Mekong region. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, I, to, I, in response to Dr. Juan, yes and no. Yes, JETSI, I think, is a new term, a new kind of technical framing, but the issues have been existing for a long, long time now. So I think maybe a better way to say it is that when we're talking about JETSI, it's to give examples that people can relate to. It's not just saying, oh, JETSI this, JETSI that, and then people have no idea what you're talking about. But when you actually talk about the issues and give them examples, people will understand it. So I, I think in terms of training, yes, we, we can train people on JESSE, but it doesn't have to be specifically on the JESSE kind of theory or something like that. It can be a lot more practical. So I, and in terms of the project, I think all the projects are aware of, uh, of who their target audience is and what their JESSE issues are, but it may be that they can cover the whole range of the JESSE. And I think from the program side, we're quite aware of that, uh, but we're also trying our best to, to help support that as well. Yep. Thanks, thanks very much, Buripat. Okay, anyone with another question? Um, uh, in the conscious of time, I would like to us to take two more questions. Two more. One sentence per question. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point, one sentence per question. It's the gentleman here. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Tan, MTG Fellow. Uh, actually, I, get, I totally agree with uh, Dr. Huan's uh, comments on, on the, uh, the further step. Actually, just, uh, I just have a small contribution to the further step. Uh, we could think about the link between uh, the, the ranch. Like, um, we have different topics, but how about the link among the, the ranch? Because uh, actually, and then we can make use of the output from the this rent research rent to other one. Like we make a, like actually we have like different uh, not not one rent, but like you think about like we have one program and actually we have different component and just one component is a grantee, and then like we like come together to solve a problem or something like that. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Okay, and uh, the last and final question or, or comment that you would like to make. Anyone wants to put their hand up? No, 
Oh, yes, we need a, we need one more, the last one. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mile, MCD fellow based at SCI Asia. So my question is that um, I know that MCD is work, he hopes to work with policy makers, but uh, how, what do you think about the importance of public engagement? We want to include um, marginalized community, old people, young people, women in our research, but what do we do to convince them to be included? What if they don't want to be included? So I think that the, the point we need to do public engagement. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mile. Chinese. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we received so many valuable uh, suggestions. Uh, I would like to address Mile first uh, questions. Uh, I think the role that you are playing is so crucial for our program like us to connect with people and the public. So you do a lot of communications. You do a lot of carrying the voice of people on ground. And that's why we are very proud to have you here. And that's also the same as other fellows and others, uh, organization, the local universities. You actually carry a lot of weight how our program is relevant and really got truth. And I think um, the program itself, and with one or two slides here, will not capture what we can do and what are all potential that we can do. But with power of every one of us here, you can play the roles in making this possible. And you could see that this, I did not emphasize that, but you can see the slide that I show is one big rate of the component called JETSI. So this is first time that we have component of the work that focus on this issue. And we make sure that JETC, it, gender equality, disability, social inclusion is one of the core business of the future program that we do. Not only support the other work, but they are leading the work and leading the program into the right direction. And I think everyone can contribute to this process. And not only JETC, currently JETC expert will be this number. In the future, maybe in next few months, we will have 10 times more JETC expert because we are already part of the family here and we work together in that direction. Dr. Huan, so I really like your practical uh, suggestion, especially with um, we really recognize uh, some challenge in in Vietnam regarding grant making, and we are working with few organization who give very concrete recommendation. We can have a follow up discussion on this how we can make it possible to have a shorter time period for approval within the country. And one of the thing I think I'm not really sure whether we would be able to fully accommodate is about the like, amount of the grant because uh, we understand some of the organization, they actually never have opportunity to access the grants, even this level of grants before, and they say that's really the biggest grant they used to get. So that's why maybe we will balance, try to think in a balance about if we do all big grant, that means the opportunity for small organizations to lead and to be those who carry or implementing the project and the grant will be limited because that will be in the situation they will compete with many organizations that actually have more experience and maybe more capacity to manage the larger grants. So that's why we try to balance it. But uh, I really understand your suggestion and it's very practical and we take note of this and we have few members and few team member here working and make sure that we try our best to incorporate all suggestions into final submissions in few days. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Dr. Chinese. Well, I think time's run out, uh, Nyang, and uh, I'd like to just thank Buripat and Dr. Chinese for um, their presence today and their comments, insightful comments. And I hope you will all join me in uh, hoping that the alliance is successful with these two submissions 
and to come with us on this journey as we move forward in the Mekong. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Andrew and Kun Boribat for your uh, facilitation. I would like to invite Dr. Janice to stay on the stage. Uh, this is our very last section. Uh, would, uh, would you um, help us to kind of wrap up and closing our Alliance meeting 2024? Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. Thank you, everyone, for joining until this minute. So I'm so happy to have this moment that uh, we have many members uh, like working on ground and working in different countries to, again, get together to reflect what we have been done in the past and what we have experienced together. And we can learn beyond what we can learn from our team from our home, our country, by having really direct talk, direct touch, you know, direct chat together. And this is really valuable. The true friendship, the trust, and the partnership will last longer than any project or any program. And I really hope that with your contribution, with your suggestion here, make this network or alliance valuable place for you to feel so worth to be here leaving your family for, for five days to be with us and hopefully what we have discussed here we bring something useful for yourselves you know as individual go back to tell you are shy your children at home that mom is here for four days and here is what we have learned and here is really useful for even our family to learn beyond the work, workplace. And that's something I will tell the, this also to my son, you know, that I feel that so happy that I meet so many friends and my big family. And why our work here is, is important is because we create the livable and enjoyable future for our children. So please keep that in mind and please keep your energy. We still have three days to go and very much looking forward to have more interaction with everyone. And thank you so much and enjoy your day. Thank you very much, Dr. Chayanis. Uh, and with that, we would like to conclude uh, MTT Alliance meetings 2024. Uh, before you leave the room, the hotel, uh, I would like to make some housekeeping announcements. Um, tomorrow, we will open the registration and check-in at 8.30. And the uh, meeting, uh, the policy forum, will start officially and sharply at 9 a.m. Um, we encourage you to uh, keep the, the name badge uh, with you. This will allow you to access the hotel, the restaurants, as well as the meeting venue without any questions. And um, that would be it. Thank you. Stay safe and enjoy your evening in Bangkok. Thank you. <laughs>